in the first episode we get to see your character show some abilities. Can you tease anything more about what kind of powers Holden might have? Absolutely. Uh, so um, Holden is sort of thrown yeah. into the world with these abilities that's superhuman and basically he can manipulate sort of the physics of this world and make like matter and energy and sort of like a telekinesis that he has, which at first is very outlandish and huge to him, he doesn't know how to control it, but uh, eventually, hopefully, he'll be able to hone those skills into something that is sort of more of a practice power. What's it like to kind of play, best way to put it is the Rip Van Winkle effect, <laughs> after, you know, having that 12-year gap, and kind of being a man without a country in his own country, so to speak. Yeah, it's, um, it's... It's, it's a really fun aspect to play, I mean, to be able to put this character who is so alien to our modern world right in the center of it and wake up and everyone expects him to know what technology is and know where that mall went when he was a kid. So it was a really fun aspect of the show to be able to play and to explore as a character for sure. And yeah, what about like seeing his friends older? Absolutely. Everyone that he knew, his, his family has changed. His, his younger brother, who was in elementary school, is now in college. I mean, his friend has a job at his I mean, there's so many parts of his life that he was so excited to get back to once he woke up, but realized that really none of those elements were there anymore. They were different people to him. So having him reconnect with his family and friends is a big part of the first episode, let alone the whole season. But then it's also a matter of he doesn't really trust this is more about that. So what's that like? Uh, Absolutely. So he, I mean, he's thrust into this world with people that he knew before, his family, and um, as well as new characters and new sort of acquaintances he will meet. And having sort of not known how he went in and all this stuff and waking up blind to everything, he needs to exactly reevaluate his friendships, his relationships, and his really his feelings for everyone because he doesn't know who he can trust and who's leading him down sort of which path, whether it be good or bad. Can you talk a little bit about the dynamic between Holden and Willa? Because she seems to really trust Holden in the first episode, but Holden has no idea who she is. And yeah. Yeah, how that maybe changes moving forward. Yeah, Willa is this mysterious girl that he meets uh, right away who seems to offer these answers to questions that he really has no idea what happened. He thinks he was in a coma for that long, and she's offering an alternate route of, no, this is what happened, and sort of offers him information that maybe he didn't realize he'd shared with other people. So she seems to have these answers to the secrets that he wants to know, and, you know, throughout it, he may or may not, you know, try to figure out the secrets and, and maybe trust her a little bit more. You guys been teasing a lot of action down the line. How did you prepare and how much of it were you actually doing versus a stunt person? Yeah, there is some very cool uh, elements which involve stunt work. We have an amazing visual effects team, we have a practical effects team, and it was a very sort of full-blown experience for me being thrown into it. And there, there is a lot of prep. There is uh, there's stunt work that the stuntmen and the very talented will run through exactly what you're doing. They'll show you how they're doing it. They'll have a stunt, uh, I'll have a stunt guy who's, you know, my Holden stunt who will do it for me if I want to, or at least show me what's going on. But for a majority of it, I mean, I love that aspect of it. I I love action, I love seeing myself, and they can use so much of it when I'm able to do it. So if I can ever tag myself in, I'm definitely the first to do it. Um, in the teaser, we see some glimpses of maybe where Holden was or where his mind was in this time. Can you talk a bit about like that magical, surreal part of the show and what that might look like? Yeah, you see sort of these glimpses of very sort of exhaust it's just like just fire and it's really just emotional flares uh, that he sees that is basically just showcases that if there was another world and if there is something that um, his coma had led to or there's something that more that he doesn't understand it's something that is a very powerful sense that if he's getting these such these powerful radiances from even being back to where he is now it's uh, something that we definitely will explore throughout the season does that explain why he comes out of a coma jacked? Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, usually if you're in a coma for 12 years, you'll fall flat. It's again, usually but... not quite as exactly as physically going, but exactly, there are definitely uh, elements both physically, emotionally, and psychologically that are quite different from a regular coma, and that sort of parallel, the paralysis, I would say, for sure. So how much, I, I guess, will just sort of peel back the onion a little bit and get more and more info of course. as the season goes on as far as what actually happens. 
Yes, it is. I mean, in the first episode, we're meeting a lot of characters. So it's us, you know, setting up and who Holden is and him coming to sort of fruition of, of waking up, really, into this giant world. But exactly, as, as you sort of witness this world with Holden, he wants to exactly peel back those layers, figure out what went on, and really see what happened in the past, what led him to the present, and where he'll go in the future. So that is something throughout the episodes that you sort of take that journey with him and figuring out what happened to him and where he's now going. I would say yes and no. I mean, there are definitely answers to uh, certain questions right off the bat that we do like to sort of pique your interest on, and we will give you some of the answers. But I mean, there are still overarching questions that I mean, we we all have, and we're very interested, in, even even myself, to see where this character goes because. I mean, at the end of the day, we love him because Holden is such a grounded character with so much depth to him that when he's given choices, it's very interesting to, as he grows, see which one he'll, avenue he'll take down. So even future thinking to stuff that is written, I wouldn't even know where he went. Yeah, I'm fascinated. Kind of jumping off of that, um, what were the traits of Holden or the story that really drew you to the project in the first? Absolutely. I, um, as I mentioned, I love um, the depth of the character, and um, Adam, as well as our, our, our creators and directors, love to keep the character in a very in a real sense of our modern world, discovering who he is. And I think that was one of the uh, the fun parts that I really enjoyed and, and continue to enjoy uh, seeing is that that discovery of, of all of his avenues of life coming to sort of grow up that dozen years in front of your eyes and all those teenage years that sort of ground us and make us who we are today and you know whether it's your childhood experiences your midlife period whatever it is and he experiences all those on screen so it's it was very fun and that really drew me to it which was a fun part to be able to revisit something that I had I had of course experienced that made me who I am and also see sort of how to reenact those and create what the character would then sort of how he would derive the rest of his life. Do you have a favorite dynamic in the show, like Holden and a certain other character that you think really works well or brings an interesting um, That, absolutely, I do, and I feel that there are so many cool characters that we have in the show that you, you'll see some in the pilot as well as there are characters throughout the entire script that really grow along with him. And, I would even say that I couldn't even compare two relationships really together. There's so many unique characters. He has his brother who is so small he's trying to reconnect with as now a friend who's really, in his mind, older than he is, but is younger to him. I mean, he now is meeting girls that are, you know, to him, this foreign, you know, mystical object as a young man who he gets to meet. And there's a lot of different, you know, traits in young women that he will come to meet, as well as his parents and adults and just how he treats different people. So I think one of the things that I can appreciate coming back to your question is just the different relationships he has and sort of build to all the characters in the show. Yeah. Was there anybody that you might have based him on as personality wise? Because in some ways, because he is a man out of time a little bit, he almost has like a, a personality or somebody like almost out of an old Jimmy Stewart movie. Kind of thing. Yeah, I um I couldn't say specifically, or I, I didn't have a specific figure in mind when I made it, but um, I, I can say that throughout the uh, sort of the genesis, of especially the pilot, throughout even the entire uh, season, we had this term of, of wonderment that we loved love to say that we wanted to bring to this character, is that it was like a baby opening his eyes and seeing things for the first time. And so we really wanted to just sort of keep, sort of as you mentioned, a man out of time, sort of seeing no matter what it was, whether it be a phone or an experience or something that he had to do or something that he discovers about himself. So I would just say that is that he sort of, I just tried to keep as much of a sort of a blind eye and sort of take yourself back to that adolescent place and have that wonderment as we all sort of enjoyed watching that character scene. Maybe having an innocence even with all those, even with those powers, still having an innocence about it. Definitely, absolutely, and that innocence of not knowing, I mean, he is the one that is given these abilities and at the end of the day has this unbelievable superhuman powers to use when he's able to control them. So he puts people in danger, he puts himself in danger, and at the end of the day it's his decisions and being the adolescent innocent guy in the room, it puts a lot of pressure on him to have to make those calls because he's either going to hurt himself or others and it's a very difficult position to put him in at that place of power. Guys, you have time for one more question. 
Um, say, you talked a little bit at the beginning about um, the technology aspect, and it's always kind of fun with this kind of story to see the big jump. Is there anything that you were like, wow, it really was that long ago, or not that long ago that we, you know, got our cell phones, or anything that, you know, as the character? That we saw in the yeah. thing. It was, um, I mean, we, it was cool seeing, uh, we kept, yeah. uh, the first thing that would pop to mind is um, in the show, it begins as Holden is his 13 year old and then he comes back and we preserve the room, like Holden's yeah. room, as his parents had left it literally from the day that he left to the day that he came back and awoke. And I think that was really cool is that oh, our art right department as well as everyone else in our props and our amazing crew had made this room up to be a 13 year old's room of the time of that period. And it was, it was very cool to, I mean, as we shot it then, but also go back and revisit and see like, he still appreciates that stuff, and there's a scene of him walking into the room and sort of revisiting all his sort of his past and all, all the things that he put himself on the wall. So that was a cool part, exactly. He's appreciating what I what the character had and what I had really a dozen years ago. Thanks, guys. Great. Thank you all so much.